Well, good morning and welcome uh, to this, our, our service of enrollment uh, for the Boys' Brigade. We want to give a very special welcome uh, to the boys. Thank you all for coming. You're all looking very smart and it's good to see you uh, as well as to see the leaders as well. And I believe certainly some parents are with us as well this morning. So a very warm welcome to one and all. Uh, we trust that the service will be a blessing to you. Uh, the theme of course this service is one that will be very fitting for the boys uh, but I'm sure whatever I will say it will apply to everyone because certainly it is a challenge to all of us and I hope that we will all be able to take uh, the message this morning so more to follow uh, in due course. So. Our call to worship this morning is taken from a very well known psalm, Come uh, let us sing to the Lord, let us make a joyful noise to the Lord of the lands. Let us serve the Lord with gladness and come into his presence with singing. We sing an opening hymn, which is 163, all people that on earth do dwell and we'll stand to sing. Uh, of course, we will sing with the Mass on uh, until further notice, but that's not excuse for us to be able to sing as loud as we possibly can. Hymn 63, All People That On Earth Do Dwell. instead to pray about everything. We want to ask God to be with us and we want to ask indeed that he will indeed bless us all individually and as families as we bow before him. Our gracious King and God of all creation, you are indeed our Saviour and our God and from everlasting to everlasting you are the Lord. You are merciful and gracious, you are slow to anger and you are abandoning in steadfast love. 
we want to come before you with thanksgiving and offer you our gratitude and our praise. Fill us with a sense of joy in knowing that uh, human as we are, limited as we are, fearful as often as we are, nevertheless, you are with us this morning to grant us your peace and indeed a wonderful sense of your presence. May we know the love that sees only the good and a love which is patient and forbearing that grows stronger when difficulties increase and that overlaps the barriers of class or, or creed and of country. Help us to love the neighbor we know so that we may learn to love our fellow men and women whom we have not even seen. Strengthen the bonds between us and guide our lives in paths of peace and joy and truth. Dear Lord, we ask for your forgiveness this morning. We are not perfect, far from it. There are so many things that we think and say and do which are not pleasing to you, and also that they are harmful to others. We ask, dear Lord, that you will forgive us for all those things that we do at times that we should not do. Forgive us for our impatience, our intolerance, our anger and our jealousies, and help us to unite as we are all called by you. We ask, Lord, that in this service of enrollment for the, the Boys' Brigade, we thank you for every single one of these boys who are here today, and for those who cannot be with us for other reasons. But nevertheless, dear Lord, we want to ask for your, in, for your blessing upon them, upon their leaders, upon their parents, their families, who are supporting them today and indeed always. May together, Father, find your grace this morning. We ask that you will take away any fears, any thoughts which prevent us to enjoy one another's company and indeed the presence of yourself with us. So open our hearts and mind. And dear Lord, as we forgive one another, may in thy loving grace you likewise forgive us too. This we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us Father to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. And before we sing our next hymn, we're going to have our first reading uh, from Psalm 73. Psalm 73. God is indeed good to Israel, to those who have pure hearts. But I had nearly lost confidence. My faith was almost gone. Because I was jealous of the proud when I saw the things go well for the wicked. I tried to think this problem through, but it was too difficult for me. Until I went into your temple, then I understood what will happen to the wicked. You will put them in slippery places and make them fall to destruction. They are instantly destroyed. They go down to a terrible end. They are like a dream that goes away in the morning when you rouse yourself. Oh Lord, they disappear. When my thoughts were bitter and my feelings were hurt, I was as stupid as an animal. I did not understand you. Yet, I always stay close to you, and you hold me by the hand. You guide me with your instruction, and at the end you will receive me with honour. What else have I in heaven but you? Since I have you, what else could I want on earth? My mind and my body may grow weak, but God is my strength. He is all I ever need. 
Those who abandon you will certainly perish. You will destroy those who are unfaithful to you. But as for me, how wonderful to be near God, to find protection with the Sovereign Lord, and to proclaim all that he has done. And before we hear the second reading, we are once again turn to our hymn books. In hymn 515, uh, again, this is a lovely uh, hymn, Soldiers of Christ, Arise 515. <laughs> Chapter 5, verses 3 to 5. We also boast of our troubles because we know the trouble produces endurance. Endurance brings God's approval, and His approval creates hope. This hope does not disappoint us, for God has poured out His love into our hearts and by means of the Holy Spirit, who is God's gift to us. May God add his blessing to this, the reading of his holy word. And to his name be the praise and the glory, now and forevermore. Amen. Boys and indeed adults, everyone here this morning, I want to talk to you about a theme. And the theme really is, are you a carrot? Are you an egg? Or are you a coffee bean? So I want you to remember that that is the title of what I'm going to talk to you this morning. Carrot, egg, coffee bean. All right? Would you remember that? Do you know it? Just let me know. Yes? Good. Adults, would you remember that? Yes? Very good. Now, does anyone, does anyone know what the word adversity means. Now that's a big word for some of you, I'm sure, but I want you to think about it, okay? Does anyone have an idea as to what the word adversity might mean, okay? If you know it, just put your hands up and tell me, okay? Troubles, yes, very good. That is very good. Anybody else, another word? What about the word difficulty? All right, does everybody know about the word difficulties? 
Yeah? What about problems? Does everyone know what the, mean, the word problems really mean? Yes, of course we do. So, what I want you to think about this morning is that sometimes there is all those things that come into our little lives and they really at times can create havoc. I'm sure you will probably appreciate that, isn't it? It's not fun. You go to school, something happens, and your day is being utterly destroyed or, or spoiled because something has happened to you that really you do not expect to happen. A problem or a challenge. Like someone being mean to you for no reason whatsoever. Or when bad things come, whether you expect it or not. So I want you to think about problems and I want you to ask yourself the question, adults, that goes for all of us as well, okay? Are you a carrot? No. Are you an egg? No. Are you a coffee bean? No. no. Everybody's very sure you are not. Let us find out. Sure. Carrot. Egg, coffee beans. Now I imagine you are at home, okay? Or maybe you can even try this maybe later on today or maybe in the coming week. You can ask your mom and dad or even others. You may even want to try yourselves, okay? But I'm sure the others probably would know this. I want you to go home and think, look at the pot and the pot is in the cooker. All right, so there is fire underneath, there is flames there, and of course, there is water. Okay, you must put water in the pot. Okay? Right. So in the first pot, you would put some carrots. Okay? In the second pot, you would put some eggs. And in the third pot, you may put some coffee beans. Are you following me? Understood? Good. Great. Adults, are you understanding all of this? Great. We need to ask the adults. Because sometimes the adults, you know, can not concentrate maybe as much or as quickly as you probably would. But they are with us this morning. So that is great to see. Has anyone touched a carrot when they are warm from the shop? Have you, have, you, have you ever touched a carrot? Yes, you have? Mums and dads? Yes? Now can anybody tell me, are they hard? Hard. Everybody thinks hard. Okay? The carrots are hard. They're crunchy sometimes when you bite them. Okay? But when you put them in the pot, after a little while, guess what happens to the carrot? Can anybody tell me what happens to the carrot? No? They go soft. Is that what you were going to say? That's right. They get, they get cooked and then because they're getting cooked, they get soft. Is that right? That's very good. Well, well said. Okay, so that's what happened. So now we're going to the eggs. Okay, everybody following me with the eggs here? When you have the eggs, without putting them first in the, in the pot, they are very soft, aren't they? If you, if you to break an egg, well, well, potentially it's a mess, isn't it? It really is, especially if it falls on your trousers or up in the carpet. Oh, my dear. If that was to happen, what a terrible thing that to be. Nevertheless, an egg is soft before we put it into the pot. But then you put the egg into the pot and maybe after seven minutes, something like that, ladies, you who are very good cooks, or gentlemen for that matter, seven minutes enough for an egg to go? Too much. Right, okay, so seven minutes is too much. So where's the figure? Where's the number? Ten. 
Right, okay, uh, let's not argue about the timing. Suffice to say, obviously some people like them very, very hard, others don't like it so hard. So I suppose seven minutes, ten minutes, it doesn't, the point really is, boys and girls, is that when you put the egg into the, into, into the pot, and you put it under, uh, on, you know, on, on, on the, you know, cooking, it gets hard. So from soft, it gets hard. The carrot was hard, and then it gets soft. Wow, that's quite an interesting thing, isn't it? Right, okay, let us go into the coffee beans. Now, the coffee beans have disappeared. If you put it into the water, I come from Spain, and I like my coffee. All right, the stronger, the better. So if you put the coffee into water and you cook it or you boil it or you allow the machine to do the business of making good coffee, guess what happened? The coffee may disappear, but the water has the color and the wonderful smell of coffee. All right? Does anybody like coffee? You do, Marian, yes? Very good. Any of the boys like coffee with milk, no? Or you prefer hot chocolate with milk? Yes, I think that is better for you, isn't it? Well, anyway, I like coffee, but remember the theme is about carrots, eggs, and indeed, coffee beans. Now, let us think about the problems. Remember I was talking to you about the beginning? Problems, difficulties, all right? Now let us think about our little lives, okay? Life is not always easy, would you agree with that? Yes? Life is not always comfortable, isn't it? Just like sitting in a hard pew. That is very uncomfortable, isn't it? Yes, of course it is. Sometimes life is very hard. Things don't happen the way we like them. Isn't that true? People don't treat us like we hope, or we work very hard, but sometimes we don't really get as many good results as we wish, okay? So, now, now let us think about those thoughts, okay? The boiling water, you hear this, boys and, and everyone else? The boiling water is the trouble. That is the problem. Okay, and things are going to become very clear in a, in a little minute. We can be like carrots. We go in tough and strong. Then we come soft, we come out soft, and maybe a little bit weak. Next slide. We can be like carrots. We get very tired. We lose hopes. We give up. And there is no fighting spirit within us. We are very, we are very hard sometimes, very strong at the beginning. We go through problems, and then something happened that we become less resilient and less focused, and we don't have the same attitude or the same spirit to actually face the problems that clearly are with us, okay? So we can become maybe like a little carrot. Therefore, my advice to everyone here this morning, don't be like a carrot. Let us not, let us not discuss the health benefits of carrots. This is nothing to do with that. I know that they say the carrots are very good for your eyesight. And by the way, you like my glasses? <laughs> I went to the opticians yesterday and I got a new pair of glasses. I can see, maybe I should eat more carrots, I don't know. But put that aside, don't be like a carrot, okay? Hard and then problems and then you become soft and you're not really having the right oof, you know, to fight it and to become stronger through it. Okay, next, next slide. Now, we can be also like eggs. Let us next slide. We start with soft and being sensitive at heart. Okay, and some of us are like that. You know, we are very approachable. We have a lovely spirit about us. 
They're always very nice and very peaceful and we do the right things at the right time. But then something happens when the problems come knocking at the door. And I wonder how we are going to respond and how we're going to be. Okay, let us next slide. We end up sometimes, and some people can be like that. We end up a little bit hard, maybe a little bit unfeeling inside, and maybe not as kind as they were before the problems came into their life. Next slide. Now, I wrote it out for hate. is not a good word, but I have to mention that word because sometimes people say, I hate you. Have you never said that to a friend? No, I hope not. Adults, have you said that to anyone? I hate you. Mm. People are thinking. They are thinking. And you know what that tells me? Yeah, they have said it. They have said it. It's not a nice word to say, but sometimes problems can make people be very hard. And they say things that they are really no one to say or mean it. But sometimes they are so angry that they say it, and it's not good. We don't like ourselves on people as well when problems come in their lives. They don't like themselves. They become half-hearted. And there is no warm feelings either. So, don't be like an egg. All right? I wonder what, we can, what we're going to say about the coffee now. What do you think we're going to say about the coffee? Remember what you said at the beginning? Are you, a, are you a carrot and you say, no? I ask the question, are you an egg? And you say, no. I also ask the question, are you going to be a coffee bean? And you said, no. no. Right? Okay, well, here comes the challenge. Right? We can be like coffee beans, all right? The water does not change the coffee powder or obviously the coffee itself, but the coffee powder definitely changes the water, doesn't it? Because when you put coffee in the water, gets into the coffee, guess what happens? The coffee rather than taste, the water rather than tasting nothing in the right environment with the heat and the hot water, then the juices and the flavor of the coffee bean becomes a wonderful kind of smell that you can smell it. And also, more importantly, you can taste it. And it's just wonderful if you like coffee, of course. If you don't, that's a different matter. Next slide. So the water has become different because of the coffee powder. You can see it, you can smell it, and also you can drink it. The hotter the water, the better the taste. Next slide, please. So we also can be like coffee beans. We can make something good from the difficulties we face. Do you agree with that, boys? For instance, you go to school and someone is doing something terribly wrong to someone. You can be an influence for good, can't it? Rather than joining the bad things, you join the good behavior and you're trying to help and you're trying to do good in that situation. And the same applies to all of us, isn't it, adults? You can be an influence for good in the world, you know. You don't have to just be a bystander that you see something wrong and you join the gang, you know, just to make the situation even worse. But rather you can be an influence for good, just like a coffee bean, all right? So we can learn new things, we have new knowledge and new skills, and of course we can learn new abilities. Now next slide. So to succeed, and this is, I'm coming to the end of my little talk this morning, all right, to succeed, first of all, boys and everybody else, you must try. You don't give up. You try, and if you fail, guess what? You try again, isn't it? It's a good thing. Who likes football? 
You like football? Does any one of you play in a, in a team? You play in a team? No. When you play a game of football with your other boys in the team, okay, and someone tackles you and you fall down on the ground, do you get up? Yes. Right? And what do you do next? You try to get the ball back. You see? Can you imagine a game of football where the first tackle, everybody goes onto the ground, that's it? Before five minutes, I probably think the game is over because everybody is giving up. Everybody is not trying again. Get up and try to chase the ball and win the game, isn't it? And I think that's what we need to do. So if we have a problem, we must try again. We must believe. And remember, this is a Christian attitude and a Christian culture. We must believe in what we are doing. And we have to believe that we are doing it right. And for the right reasons. We must not give up. And the other thing which is very difficult for people to do, are we there yet? <laughs> when is this going to be ready? I want to go home. No. Or I want to do this, or I want to do that. Do you know what I'm talking about? Patience, patience isn't it? We just don't have enough patience sometimes. Well, in order to face the challenges of life, we have to be a little bit patient and we must keep pushing. And sometimes, difficult as it is to push up the way, nevertheless, that's what sometimes we must do because in doing so, we can actually achieve the very thing that we want to do. Next slide. Okay, so what are we like when things do not go well? Are we like carrots? No. no, please don't be. Are we like eggs? Please don't be. Are you like coffee beans? <laughs> well, well, well. Because the answer is, if you are not, you better be. You better be. Because we have to be sources and we have to be influenced for good. So I put a challenge to you, boy. When you go to school tomorrow, remember to be a good influence, okay? Do your best, study hard, but also when you go to school, trying to be a good person to help others and do what you are told to do so that you can learn and be a person of influence for good in the future as well. So remember, don't be put off by challenges, no matter what the circumstances, one should be ready to change oneself and to make a difference to feel others better. Okay, well, I think that's my little talk for this morning. I hope you really will understand what I'm saying. There is a little poem I want to read to you as I, in my conclusion. And this is a little poem which I don't know who wrote it, but the author reminds us that we need, <coughs> what we need sometimes is not always what we want. This is what it says, the little poem. I asked for strength and God gave me difficulties to make me strong. I asked for wisdom and God gave me problems to solve. I asked for prosperity and God gave me a brain and an energy to work. I asked for courage and God gave me difficulties to overcome. I asked for love and God gave me the troubled people to help. I asked for favor and God gave me opportunities. I got nothing I wanted, but I received everything I need it. And you know, boys and adults here this morning, it doesn't matter what life may throw at you. If God is on your side, you can always achieve as much as God gives you the strength to do. So try your best. Always, always look to Him. And when you are in doubt or a little bit afraid, you say a prayer to Him.
and you'll be surprised what he will do for you. Okay? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, when we find ourselves in hot water, help us to remember your grace as well we tell others of our faith and of our confidence that we have in you. Comfort and give us grateful hearts as we face the many trials of life. Whatever challenges we may face in our young lives, or even however many years we have accumulated through many years now, we just pray, Lord, help us to be a good influence for good and everything that we do, do it all for the good of others and for your glory. Amen. service and it follows a very traditional form and I am sure for the right reasons and we must follow it because the words are very meaningful and certainly not least the dedication part of it as well. Now the Church of Jesus Christ was commissioned by its Lord to go into the world and make disciples of all nations. And the Boys Brigade is part of the Church and rejoices that it, it is called to share in this task, and in particular to give nurture to the boys of the company and to present them with the claims of Jesus Christ. Today, uh, the leaders of our company have come uh, to place themselves afresh uh, to this work. So as we do that, let us just ask God to be with us in what we are about uh, to do. Let us uh, say together, if we can, that prayer, which is on the screen, okay? So we say together, 
We thank you, Lord, that in every generation you entrust young people to the care of your church and call those who are to exercise a ministry among them. Grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, those who place themselves afresh to this service today may be enabled to fulfill this task through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, I wonder as to whether I can ask the leaders of the Second Blegari Company of the Boys Brigade maybe to stand, if that's okay. Is that all right? Now, leaders of the Second Blegari Company of the Boys Brigade, you have been called by God to the work of caring for and training the boys of our company. Will you by your work and example, seek to advance Christ's kingdom and work in partnership with the church to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you do, will you, play, uh, will you please respond as in the screen? Will you, by prayer and personal preparation, seek to equip yourself in every possible way for this service? May God give you grace to be faithful to Him and successful in your work for Him in the Boys' Brigade. Now, of course, we are not allowed to shake hands but can I, from a distance, just basically <laughs> wave to you and indeed ask God to bless you as you endeavour to do this important task and that God will indeed enable you to do so well for the sake of the boys and for his kingdom. Now we want to enrol uh, the whole company and ask the boys to stand. Uh, would you pass that on, uh, maybe ignore that particular one, go on, okay? Uh, right, okay, just leave that there for a moment, okay? Right, boys, okay, I hope you're going to be able to answer in the affirmative, okay? Now we enroll uh, the whole company and ask the boys to stand. As members of the Boys Brigade, you are part of the worldwide family of the church, do you promise to be a loyal member of the Boys Brigade and to support the activities of the company? Now, at this point, if you can, will you say the words, we do, okay? Are you ready to say we do together, okay? We do? We do. Great, okay, all right, I know I could... I could see the lips moving and I could hear some of you obviously saying, so well done to you. So may God help you to keep your promises and give you the strength to overcome temptation and to be loyal to our great captain and savior, Jesus Christ. Now, you may be seated, but this is a question which I want to put to the congregation. Okay, this is to the members and friends of Legari Paris Church because we pray for you and we want to help you and we're always here to do whatever we can to support the Boys Brigade. So this question is for the members of our church, okay? Do you promise to support the work of our company of the Boys Brigade and to pray for its leaders and boys that God will keep them sure and steadfast in their faith. We do. we do. Okay, did you hear that? That was a very strong affirmation of support, isn't it? That's great, and we mean it, we mean it very, very much. So let us, uh, let us pray um, <clears throat> for the Boys Brigade, okay? Let us pray for the Boys Brigade and we say together, okay, as per the screen, 
Bless, O God, the boy's brigade, and give it to it greater power to advance your kingdom throughout the world. Grant in your mercy that every member, past and present, may prove steadfast in his high fight against evil and true in his allegiance to you. Help us in times of temptation, make us strong when we are weak, give us courage in difficulty, faithfulness in duty, loyalty in friendship, and finally, by your mercy, bring us into your everlasting kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, well done, one and all. Okay, and now we are going to sing what is a very, very good hymn, and of course is the hymn of the Boys' Brigade, Will Your Anchor Hold, and we'll stand to sing. Okay? Great. just for a few moments of prayer of thanksgiving and also of intercession for the needs of others before we sing our final hymn and the benediction. Let us pray. Our gracious and loving Father, we want to thank you for your presence with us today. Uh, we thank you for the beauty of children and their joy in all the beautiful things that they do, for their, for their laughter, their joy, their hope, the sense of wonder that they bring to our lives, for the joy and the light they bring into the world, and their enthusiasm 
their abounding energy and their love for the heroic and the adventurous, for their candid, generous trust in those around them, and for their quick response to calls of love and of service. O oh, Father, you are indeed the God of all mankind, the strength and we pray you, all who are striving after a sense of brotherhood and who are working for righteousness and peace and for the welfare of all. Guide the hearts and minds of rulers and statesmen and stateswomen, for our leaders in our country, for the different nations. May they have the wisdom from you. May you give them, dear Lord, the courage to do what is right for the good of all. And may you help us, dear Lord, to do our best, not only to serve one another, but above all, to be a good influence for good. Help us, dear Lord, always to be of good cheer. Let us not be disheartened by our difficulties. Let us never doubt your love for any of your promises. Give us grace to be encouragers of others. Never discourage us. Let us not go about with sadness or fear among men, but let us always make life easier, never harder, for those who come within our influence. Almighty God, bless the young people gathered here today. Allow their minds to be broadened, their hopes to be raised, and their futures filled with promise as they grow in knowledge and wisdom by your grace and through the Boys' Brigade. As they learn more about you and your ways, may they be inspired to reach out in service to all in need as they strive to become disciples in our world today. And may all their efforts guide each of them to know, to love, and to serve. Father, bless their families. Thank you for moms and dads, for grandparents, brothers and sisters, for aunts and uncles, and for all those, Father, who are within our lives. Lord, just bless us as families. Bless us, dear Lord, as a community. And may the sweet, holy presence and influence of God Almighty through Jesus Christ, our Savior, descend upon us all and give us that sense of wonder, that sense of wanting to know your truth and to follow you into a happier and blessed life. This we pray and we ask through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and our wonderful, wonderful Savior. Amen. Amen. And so we come to the end of our service and we sing our final hymn. And again, one of the great favors of the church, mine eyes have seen the glory. 476, and this is our final hymn, and we'll stand to sing.
place filled with faith and hope knowing that even when we are tempted and tried Christ will always be with us to love us and guide us further along this journey of life may the grace and mercy of our Heavenly Father touch you today go forward and take the light of Christ with you to your home to your school to your work to your friends to your family Feel the guidance of the Holy Spirit in your lives forever. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.